Yes. Yes. Yes.
No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ja, juist. Yes. Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. So, let's see. Oh, it's still shooting. It can be shooting. Okay, so today we are going to see a game of the semi finals between Lucas L99 and Ajit. They have both uh, chosen to play Portuguese. I need help. Actually, so as we can see. Uh, Lucas has uh, taken every single crate uh, he uh, actually had in the beginning of the map. Ah, Ajivna also has, has gathered the uh, coin left. However, yeah, sometimes it might be interesting not to gather the, co the, the coin treasures in order to uh, gather enough food so we can uh, launch the H2 uh, as quick as possible. So. Let's see about their decks. So, they are pl both playing with... Um, oh, so they have both TPs already, that's good. Although, I don't know if one well, the natives. Uh, let me ask them, so... Okay, so let's see in the meanwhile their decks. Okay, so they're playing with natives. And a Lucas has taken... A quite standard deck. So, let's see if someone can actually hear me. Uh, can you me? So, um, very standard deck. Having those explorer cards. Well, this one is almost a must. Well, it is a must. All the other cards are a must, except maybe Blood Brothers. And the uh, well navigator card. It could be quite interesting to have that infinite wood card on deck and in the deck, because well, it uh, as so uh, as soon as you run out of wood on this map, well, there's nowhere to go anymore. So it uh, it can be quite useful in some situations, as well as well you cannot sustain uh, infinite two p. Uh, during the fight, so you might want an alternative, uh, a, an alternative card 
uh, for those two piece. So you could have taken out the blood. You could have taken out the blood brothers, but still, those blood brothers they increase the two p attack by seven. But yeah, well, since they're not being used continuously, well, it's not a must. He could have taken out the navigator card, but still, having a dog is quite in interesting too. So let's see about a G. He has not chosen a deck yet. That's weird. Oh no, this is my deck. What the fuck? Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, so apparently Ajeev has exactly the same deck. Nobody chose to go uh, Stonemasons as Portuguese, apparently, which could be quite interesting on that one because, well, as you can see, the map is huge. So having that Stonemasons could be very interesting to wall most of the map and then mortar uh, all the map down. So, it seems that Lucas has already aged. Uh, Ajeev has been launching the age now. He has more resources than uh, Lucas, but he has not his second TP, TC up yet. So, they both have the same score. Although, uh, Ajeev has aged a bit later. Oh, now I see why. Actually, Ajeev chose to make one house and right away, straight go to the food gathering in order to uh, rush. Uh, no, well, this is weird because he didn't rush to H2. Uh, I don't understand why he didn't make that market from the beginning. Well, it seems that Ajeev is doing quite a, a weird boom, but well. As you can see, it's working because they both have the same points. Even well, the chip is quite a bit in front of uh, Lucas at the moment. He could soon launch that H3. Uh, well, now he's he has run out of hunts. He just needs 100 food, and well, he has to retask his villagers on this food hunt. He could better have tasked them on these berries in order to gather that 1200 food necess uh, which he needs in order to reach H3 uh, well now he has lost a lot of food walking and well he could have gathered that food on those berries just in order to launch the age it could have well speed uh, it, it could have uh, made his age a quick uh, a bit quicker but well it's still working He's still uh, aging up uh, way sooner than Lucas is. He has already launched H3 and has, well, of course, a bit less villagers. Lucas has 21, Ajeev has 18, but uh, Ajeev will have his third TC out way sooner and both his other cards. So that means that uh, he will uh, actually uh, catch up with Lucas and Lucas has just launched the H3. Uh, so there comes the H3, three. so it seems that Lucas is going for a very normal boom. Okay, so, uh, sounds fine. Can you have any no? Sounds fine to me, sounds good. Okay, yeah, sounds seems good. That's nice. So, well, of course, there will not be a lot to say about a Portuguese boom. So it seems that both of them are actually treasure hunting and to be honest there are a lot of treasures on this map. What the fuck is this? There should be a treasure here according to the minimap but there isn't. That's weird. But there is one here. Okay so well let's see about the resource distribution. The chief has a hunt here. He had a hunt here, he almost ate it, and he has one, two, two hunts in the middle, two and a half, and one here, so, as they are uh, located quite far from his TC, I'm not sure that Ajeev will have a very good boom this one, so for Lucas, it's the same, however, he has two elephants over here, and if he actually spotted those two, that can help him a lot. 
because well they get uh, that's 2k food oh wow that's huge uh, resource dis uh, advantage for Lucas he has six elements in total so that makes if he actually spots it, those two, uh, four elephants, he will have a huge boom advantage. He won't even have to go on the mill for food. He just has to explore. So, very unfair resource distribution, I have to say. About the mines, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So, well, Portuguese will mostly need the first mine and the second one, which is here for Lucas and here for a G, so quite standard for both. It's quite fair for both of them. So it seems that a hasn't actually caught up with Lucas's boom, even though he had that TC out earlier. As you can see, Lucas has already almost enough resources to gather to launch the H4. A uh, not at all. He's uh, well lagging behind. I guess that's because of the uh, food that is located so far away. But yeah, and there goes the age four of Lucas. So let's see the card order. Okay, so. Lucas has done, of course, hunting dogs very soon. Then that place of mines. Ajiv chose to go H2 first, as I s explained earlier. So, very standard for um, upgrade um, order. Although, that uh, gang soul upgrade is not really necessary for Portuguese. In H3, because normally when you gather the wood from the uh, the wood crates of H2, well, you use uh, those 400 wood in order to get steel traps and to get amalgamation. So that is a total of 325 wood, which means that you still have uh, 25 wood to gather in order to reach uh, enough wood to build a house. So that 25 wood. Uh, that you have to chop in order to get that house out could be uh, well chopped without the upgrade and uh, then be built so that actually uh, spares you uh, that 100 food upgrade which uh, allows you to go to H4 just a second or two sooner depending on the situation well on the deck and it won't, won't make such a difference but on Andy's it can actually as uh, in 3v3, uh, lack hunts are lacking a lot, but so it seems that Ajeev has also launched the H4, but he is far behind now in the boom. Apparently, Portuguese is definitely not Ajeev's Sith, but we will see if he can catch up in the fight with Lucas. So, uh, to come back to uh, the Gangsaw improvement from Lucas, well, I have uh, found an alternative uh, to that Gangsaw improvement, which could be more interesting. That is, just gather that 25 wood for the house you need in H3, uh, and then buy in the market uh, 100 wood once you're H4, so you can actually uh, well, not uh, that you can actually win some time that uh, wills are gathering. They don't have to walk to trees, you don't have to retask them. You have perfect timing on everything you need, as you don't have to shift with them uh, every time. And anyway, even if you uh, have that gang soul upgrade, your villagers will always gather more uh, gold than uh, wood at that time. So it's way more interesting to buy 100 wood when you're age 4 than actually chop it. So it seems that Lucas has already done the water power upgrade. That's quite weird, I have to say. But it's not impossible. And there goes the uh, cannery upgrade. 
Uh, how is that possible, though? He hasn't built his factory before. Well, anyway. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, it's okay. So, it seems that the chief has been launching H4, so does Lucas. However, if he chose not to upgrade those cannery and water uh, power improvements, he could have launched H5 earlier. But, well, uh, it won't change that much. Compared to the G, uh, a G boom now. I think that Lucas will reach way more than a G uh, at the moment. But we will see. So yeah, of course, the advantage of doing uh, gang saw earlier in H3. That's uh, that's time you win in order to uh, well launch the uh, lock fume and uh, the uh, gang no not gang saw but the H3 wood upgrade in the market as soon as you. Uh, start launching H5, no, it's circular, circular saw, sorry. So, but, however, if you uh, pay attention, you can actually do both, uh, well, all three upgrades, all three root upgrades in a row before actually reaching H5. Uh, just between the, the moment you launch it and between the moment you reach it, you have enough time, so. You don't actually need to launch that gang saw earlier. But, of course, that implies that you have to launch it very uh, that you have to launch it as soon as it uh, as the previous one is over but well if you want a good boom you need it so uh, uh, Ajeev has his factories on wood on food over here quite inter uh, quite smart because well as you can see there is almost no hunt left this is the only hunt left for Ajeev only coin and here are just a bit so in order to pump those bills out, he just needs that food. However, I should... Oh yeah, he just upgraded it. Uh, the factory is too, so that's good. So what about uh, Lucas? He has the same. And he has actually seen... He has actually taken all those four elements, so... Quite interesting that he still needs it. But... Well, it's possible. Uh, so... To be honest, uh, I should rather them both, I think that Lucas will do it, that I should rather him to uh, keep his factory on food for a moment, just in order to pump out all of, the, all of his wills and to be able to do every uh, plantation upgrade. Because if you do all the plantations upgrades before uh, launching the church cards, uh, well, sorry, if you do every plantation upgrade, uh, you can actually get that five extra percent you lose when you launch the church card, the church card. So that will uh, well allow you to gather just a slot more compared to the the guy who, who actually uh, well will send the church card straight away in order to gather some more food. But <coughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sick. I know. So, it seems that uh, none of them has actually uh, launched the uh, food update yet from the church. So, are they launching the plantation upgrades? No, not yet. That's a shame. Although, Jeep has enough food for it. So does Lucas. But, well. Oh, yeah, okay. It's it, Apparently, Lucas is going for food. Uh, uh, wood on his factories and oh, he launched it, but he took it back. He took his church guard back. That's awkward. But well, that means that he will quite soon launch it, as he will need food. And there goes the church card for Ajeev and also for Lucas. The sorry, the church upgrade, not the church card. So both of them will not uh, well have the. 5% advantage for a short time because not only you will have that advantage on uh, gold but, but also on wood so well if you do 50 50 uh, well 50 uh, villagers on wood and 50 villagers on uh, gold you can actually win 10% resources in total uh, compared to uh, the guy who actually sends it straight away but of course uh, that implies that you will uh, have you? You will need a perfect timing 
uh, when you uh, have to go the, uh, to the mills because otherwise you will uh, find yourself with way too much wood and way too much gold. Which is, which could be a disadvantage in the port mirror. Which will be way more food than gold. Uh, yeah, than gold. So it seems that uh, Ajeev still has his factories on food though. So I don't know why. Maybe he just forgot them. Oh no, he's doing the wood upgrade now, so he's waiting for that one. And they are building out, so it's. I, if I re recall correctly, this is Ajeev's first TC. So, well, building or over here, that might be way too dangerous, I have to say. I mean, he won't even be able to wall correctly over here. Even his factories are. Well, have a, a, a very dangerous spot because, well, first of all, the wall over here will not be correct. As you can see, this is the max maximum he can do, so means he will not have a um, uh, front base out of, uh, outside of it. But still, uh, it's still okay though. But if uh, Lucas will get position of uh, this place, he can just send mortars in right here. And from this position, we can shoot both of his factories out. So it seems that he just still has food fac uh, his factories on food. However, uh, although I prefer uh, Lucas's uh, base, uh, well, yeah, his base, because well, he has placed his factories right uh, behind. Well, it's the way of my warning. I need to take it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, that can definitely not be uh, close enough. To, well, if you continue this one right over here, it will end right here. Normally, so well, it will uh, it will not uh, disturb his walls. He has just uh, a wrong uh, base placement, but maybe he thought that this was his first PC. Probably they <coughs> um, So, this is very clear. He still has his factories on food. Maybe it's his strategy to go uh, like that, but still, as you gotta food way quicker than wood, you might just want your factories on wood, which is way easier. Uh, as you will have a, 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 bo uh, a bigger boom than, uh, no uh, than normally. So, Let's see if I'm still can still be heard correctly. Uh... Ah, it seems that Pantalux will see his first non-retarded deck and turny game. I guess that he has seen my game against Tom GR and that he found it uh, retarded. Well, I actually agree with him. Uh, as well as my game against Dictator on uh, Declan. Uh, so, oh, good one, please. I'm here. I'm up. Uh, okay. Oh, it seems that Tom GR is also watching the stream, so. Sorry, Tom, for insulting you. <laughs> well, I didn't really insult you, but. Oh, so it seems that uh, Ajib has found out that he can actually build over the uh, trade route. Although, just for information, uh, as information for those who do not know how that works, to build over the uh, trade route. Normally, you cannot build over the trade route, as you, most of you uh, has experience, of course. But in some cases, well, you, uh, it, uh, I will show it you right here. You can see uh, the chart. Well, the rickshaw coming, and well, it's coming, it's coming, and it's coming, and it disappears right over here, where my mouse is. So that means that all this, uh, well, most of this uh, uh, trade route that is uh, not used by the rickshaw, well, it can be, uh, well, it's considered as just well unused ground. So you can actually uh, build on it in that case. Although I'm not sure that it's the case for Lucas. Yeah, I think it's the case for Lucas too. 
No, it's not. The train goes away uh, to the end of the map, so as you can see, here you would be able to build right over the, the, the trading route to but well, sometimes uh, it can be useful, but well, still, uh, to be honest, I've never seen someone win a game just because of that. But still, some, uh, it can be funny because that means that your um, uh, base out, uh, output will be quite different because that means you can build uh, over here. Well, if you consider that your wall is like this, like my mouth is at the moment, that means that you can build uh, over here without uh, being afraid of not being able to wall. So it can be just, well, you win just uh, a little bit more space, but it's not that huge though. So they have, are both launching the upgrades. So I must say that, oh, this could be quite difficult to wall though for Lucas, but, well, uh, I'm doubt that Ajeev is going to make it this far on the map that he will actually run in uh, from here but well you never know so it seems that uh, Ajeev has chosen to send the Tupi well uh, I don't know what card he's going to send else uh, besides that one because well as he has the trading as they both have the trade route they might want to get most of the important cards out, uh, in a, especially in the port mirror. So, of course, 2P give you overpop. But if you're lacking um, micromanagement, you will actually lose that overpop uh, almost directly uh, to uh, the organ guns if you do not snipe them with the coverings. Uh, so, well, you should. Uh, watch out for it so most of the time those two people can be useful but I would say not in the uh, first army though because of uh, all the organs the enemy will have I should actually put them well as units all over the map in order to well kill the, uh, the enemy villagers that are building uh, walls and all that shit so well I should actually use it for that which might be way more interesting and way more use uh, of the for the 2P than actually use them in a fight uh, in a port mirror because the organ guns well they just uh, rate them so badly as they just have 140 HP each the one organ gun kills at least three or four 2P uh, so well if you have six organ guns that means you well have lost almost all the 2P in one well one second. So, which is a bit of a shame if you send that card, so a must, I should say, in a Portuguese mirror should be the uh, 2 Explore card. Uh, so this one, I'm going to show you. Shit! Fuck. So, let's see, look at this back then. Why can I not see their decks? This is weird. Okay. Well, I guess that's due to the pause then. But anyway. Um. <coughs> so apparently the quality is way better. Das sind die Russen, die Europäischen, Holländer, Deutsche. Ja, okay. So, it seems that my um, uh, streaming quality has actually increased. So, I'm quite happy about that one. Um, so, let's see if it's still buffering. Ah, oh, there we have it. So, okay, so let's see the uh, decks. So, oh, 
so I was going to explain what cards you should definitely send in a Portuguese mirror, which are Bandy Ramsey's the two explorer card. Because those uh, two explorers, well, you can either use them to uh, get those trading posts as fast as possible uh, at 40, but well, to be honest, I do not see that as a huge use of the uh, two explorers. I would actually use them as tanks in the first fight. Because, well, as you know, uh, every explorer, well, let's see where they are, here is one, every explorer has, uh, well, 2980 HP. That's because he did not send the uh, advanced arsenal uh, card yet. With it, it reaches uh, 3040 3, HP, I believe. So, uh, well, they have just a slight more than the, just a slight, yeah, the slightest more HP than 3k. So, those uh, 3k HP, well, as uh, explorers have 10% ranged uh, resistance, uh, that means that if the opponent goes mostly uh, infantry, like Cassadors and Musketeers, those uh, explorers, if you put them in front of your army, they will actually... Uh, be a uh, well, uh, they are being used as a decoy uh, for those musketeers and caçadors. So that means that your caçadors or musketeers or anything you have will not be will not be shot by the opponent uh, unless he tasks them uh, personally. But normally you do not task your um, uh, army to attack. Uh, a special kind of unit at 40 because, well, as soon as the treaty is over, you might want to wall the map in order to get map control. So, if you use them as tanks, well, you win most of the, uh, well, you will not lose most of your infantry besides if they get killed by the organ guns. But so, it's a very uh, good unit to use right after 40. Uh, well, uh, right, uh, right in the uh, first uh, fight. So I would really rather you to use that if you uh, go um, Portuguese ones. So as you can see, oh sorry, I was uh, wrong. They do not reach uh, 3040 k, uh, 40 uh, HP. They reach 3020 HP. So well, not such a big difference, especially because the explorers we only cost 100 gold to ransom. Of course, they go to the opponent, but you, if you actually do the math behind it, well, you lose 100 gold uh, to get a 3k HP unit, which uh, with uh, 37 uh, ranged uh, damage. So that's like a huge, uh, well, skirmisher, I would say, with uh, incredible amount of HP. And, well, as they are being used as decoys, well, your units will be able to shoot the other units uh, instead of getting killed, so you win uh, resources, resources on that side, and on the other side, every explorer, if you have three, every single explorer can use uh, their uh, crack shot. Well, sorry, not yeah, it's the crack shot. They can use the crack shot, uh, so that means that, well, I don't really know the uh, reload time of the crack shot, but if you believe it's one minute, uh, if you if you suppose it's one minute, that means every minute you can kill instantly uh, three units of the opponent, which is well, just huge because well, uh, one unit well mostly you will just task them to kill hussar or dragoons because they are very uh, well cost expensive. So, uh, as you are killing two population at that moment and, well, uh, almost 200 resources, that means that not only on the fact that they are being used as decoy you win resources, but also on the fact that uh, you are killing 200, uh, well, a, a unit that costs at least 200 uh, resources. So, and that times three. So, well, you're losing 300 gold uh, compared to uh, a win of an incredible amount of resources. Uh, on the other hand, so it's really uh, interesting to play those explorers. Well, you can just imagine if you're playing against an Indian player, well, those explorers, every single uh, one of your explorers can crack shot a Mahout down 
so that means that you can take I believe that with the card mahouts are seven uh, plus seven population so that means that you can kill 21 population with your explorers in just one shot every minute so that's very interesting especially because the mahouts are so expensive same for how does although you cannot kill uh, artillery with them not with crack shots which is obvious however uh, which can also be interesting as you know the explorer have a lot of HP that means they no. can actually get uh, through the enemy through the enemy's army <coughs> without dying so if the enemy is hiding his uh, culverins or well, mostly his organ guns behind his army well you can toss your free explorers on uh, melee damage and a rush for the organ guns if you do not have coverings. And well, your explorers are just taking care of the organ guns perfectly. So that's also a use you can uh, make of the explorers, which can be interesting. Just depending on the situation, what you need at that moment. <coughs> I'm sorry, man. Guys, uh, I'm, well, not the area really. Yeah, let's say uh, I do not have a good health at the moment. So let's see about the improvements. Uh, they both have done advanced arsenal. Let's see the cards that has been sent. So the shipments to explore. Ah, and Lucas has chose uh, chosen to uh, send range finding card. Very interesting card because well, mortars at with uh, 50 range, 50 range. Not 40, uh, as you uh, mostly know. Well, 50 range on Deccan. Well, that's just incredible. That means that if you put a mortar right where his explorer is standing yes. here at the moment, you can, well, almost uh, shoot his tower. I say almost, not really. Well, you may, might, you will make it right, right to, well, just in front of the bushes. Yeah, you can hit any building just in front of the, uh, the bushes. So, well, that's very interesting right after the start fight, especially if you win it, because, well, if you win it, that means the opponent will not be able to uh, make any FP at all. So, they both have sent the Explorer cards, very interesting. Both have sent Advanced Arsenal, well, as they both have a trading post, they can afford it. So, ah, it seems that Lucas is actually using my strategy. Wow. I think, I don't know if he uh, figured it out himself or whatever, but it seems he's making sheep. This is something that most uh, of the uh, vanilla players will know. Because, well, if you have ever played No Rush uh, 60 on uh, the Great Plains, then, then you know that the TC placements are just a pain in the ass. So that means that you will have to block the trading route off if you do not want to get rushed with a box or whatever it is. So the best way to block your trading route off is to cheap livestock because, well, first of all, the enemy cannot kill livestock. They cannot move them as long as you have something, some unit or some tower, some building close to it. Uh, except where well, walls, of course. Walls do not count as uh, a unit for the sheep. So if you just have walls um, around the sheep, the, uh, the opponent will be able to convert your sheep. If you have the tower, it's, al it's already enough. So very interesting to block off the trading route. Although I'm not sure that he will actually block them off with it. Or is he? I don't know. Maybe he is just trolling with the jeep and he is sending the sheep in the battlefield. I don't know. We will see it r right away. I think. When the, uh, when the game starts. Ah oh, no, he's sending it, sending it to the trading route. Maybe he has seen my uh, uh, strategy on uh, deck and for, uh, against Tom GR. I don't know. Or maybe he figured it out himself. But if he's actually going sheep on the trading route, he might want just a little bit more sheep than that. Because well, this, this is not enough. Even if he tasks them uh, like he's doing at the moment, I'm sure that even one, well, one unit will be able to get through it. I'm sure of it. But uh, it's way easier to get through, uh, to get through 12 sheep than to get through 30 sheep. And 
just for information for those who do not know how to work with sheep uh, if you make your sheep the block of the uh, trading route but if your building gets killed well obviously that means your sheep are getting converted but if you want to prevent that uh, and still be, uh, be blocking off the trading route what you might want to do is select your sheep and kill them all at that moment when your building is getting killed because dead livestock is like dead hunts they are still blocking off the route so it's still very uh, useful at the moment especially because the opponent will not be able to move that sheep uh, the, those dead sheep so well uh, dead sheep are even better than uh, sheep uh, being alive I have to say but of course dead sheep are not eternal and uh, alive sheep that are alive are unfortunately so if you are uh, killing your sheep it should really be uh, a necessity on that at that time and not uh, a long-term choice so okay let's see yeah sheep are okay let's all big um, Oh, what's the Okay, sorry guys. Uh, I just had to read the, uh, the chat of the uh, stream in order to see if something was wrong, but it seems like nothing is wrong with quality or anything like that. So I hope that you can still uh, watch this game correctly. So, oh, it appears that Lucas has been has his units blocked over here. So I hope he will see it in time. So. To see, let's see uh, his army. It seems that Lucas is going 25 Hussar, 4 Dragoons, 21 uh, Casador, Crossbows, 10 Musketeers, and that's all. See, oh no, one organ, two mortars, and the Minutemen. And it seems that uh, Ajeev is going 5 organs, 8 Culverins, and 3 mortars. So that means that he's actually expecting uh, Lucas to go uh, very uh, artillery heavy. So this might be a huge advantage for uh, Lucas right after the fight. Uh, well, no, uh, for the first fight, sorry, because well, as he almost has no artillery at all, if a jeep does not have a lot of anti cav that means that he will just get rolled over by uh, Lucas. <coughs> I don't know where he, the rest of his army is, though, because, well... A, uh, 10 musketeers, 8 coverings, 5 organs, and 3 mortars. That's like, uh, well, 30, 30, and 5, 50, well, that's something like, uh, well, 70 population, so that means he's still lacking much population. Ready? Uh, 25, sorry, something like that. Yes. Ah, it's because he has Casador. Oh no, sorry, I was, I was watching. Oh no, sorry, I didn't watch Casador. So, so it seems he has 17 Casadors. No, oh, 27. Oh, so this is going to hurt indeed a lot because he has no, not a lot of anti cap at all. So, uh, Lucas might want to pull back his explorer. I hope he will see it in time. So, let's see. Uh, it seems that Lucas has put his ex expos on the left side in order to or kill any uh, villager that is coming. It seems that uh, a chief sees it coming with his, mor his mortars, although he will not be able to do a lot about it. 
Ah, so they have pulled back both of their explorers. It seems that uh, both of them have their explorers in front of their army. Uh, although, yeah, they're in front of the army, so... There comes the Hussar rush, although I don't know why Lucas has nothing over here. No villagers, no protection at all, and he has not seen this. Which is, oh, now he does. Well, he was getting auto-blocked by his sheep. That's a shame. Because now he's not in time. And he has no villager over here. In order to wall off. And he has no... Yeah, he has villagers in the middle. That's good. Because, well, as Portuguese, Portuguese mo mirror. Well, the uh, plateau will win you the game. So just let's see if anything is still okay. Yeah, I love you too, some GR. <laughs> okay, so uh, the fight is going to start right now. And there we go, the Hussar are rushing in. Ajeev chose to put those uh, two feet right in front of his army. Well, in this case, it's useful because he uh, because Lucas has no uh, artillery. It seems that his Hussar rush is not working that good. It's, it's doing their job, but it's not perfect though. He might have wanted to make just a little bit more Hussar. It seems that Luke, uh, Ajeev is going to run right into uh, his... Uh, in Ajeev, uh, sorry, Lucas' base with these mortars. Although I'm not sure that it will be very uh, painful for Lucas because, well, uh, those uh, Black Riders and three mortars, that's just bullshit, to be honest. And Lucas is taking the plateau at this, at this moment, so... He's been walling this side off. He has spotted uh, a GIF's uh, attempt to make the uh, artillery foundry. Now he should wall this off a bit quicker. Especially now he has the plateau. He should make mortars and wall this off, this off, and this. So he can shoot every building he needs. He should wall this off too. But oh, that's interesting. The chief went for a factory rush, but well, it's not working. His mortars are too uh, weak at the moment, so yeah. He, that's a missed attempt. I do not like uh, Lucas's counter army for those uh, uh, Black Riders, though. Because, well, Black Riders, they are very population heavy you might just want to use either musketeers or not send anything at all just to get rid of the um, uh, sorry the mortars because well if you have black ri if the opponent still has black riders that means he well, every bl um, I believe a black rider is uh, three population let's see yeah three pop so 11 black rider too much that means that he has 33 uh, population he cannot use, so, especially for weak units. To be honest, I find uh, them very weak. But... Oh, it seems that Ajib has actually developed his base over here, and he is developing also over here. Lucas is not walling enough, so Ajib is trying to run, but Lucas is not walling enough also over here. To watch out for this. Although he has the plateau now, but he's not pushing at all. It seems that Lucas, well, is definitely is trying to defend even harder than, well, actually uh, pushing in the middle. It could be a bad choice because, well, from right here he could put he could have put some mortars to a three and shoot every single building without even having to. Well, defend with a lot of units. But that's his choice. Especially now that he is getting also attacked from the middle. In fact, he is getting uh, run ran out by Ajeev at the moment, so he should uh, watch out.
Okay, so it seems that uh, a chief is going very happy in the middle at the moment. It's, uh, it also seems that Lucas is more concentrating on walling his uh, base out. Which is a good idea because, well, Ajib is developing his basement, uh, his, uh, yeah, his base on the left side of the map. So either, uh, Lucas will have to split or he will just have to, uh, focus on the plateau and rape every building. Especially now he is able to do that because he has those walls up. Yeah, now he has the walls up, so... No, no, no cavalry. Shit. But still, those walls up means that he can hold a jib just a bit longer on, on uh, below, on the left side, so... That means that uh, Lucas can uh, concentrate a bit longer on Pateau, just long enough to get rid of these buildings. When he, once he has this, these buildings out, he can get all these, and well, these also, but... This is more important because, well, just two walls. So, let's see, there's nothing to see here. So, I should brother Lucas to, well, wall just a bit more on the plateau right over here. Having those walls here could help. As you can just put your organ guns behind him and not get him killed by cavalry. So he should put the mortar forward at the moment to get rid of this one and then it's good. Ah, there is a petard spam from Ajeev. He is attempting to rush the uh, factory again. I'm not sure now. Uh, Lucas made it in time. He should be making musketeers over now, not a hussar or dragoons. Especially versus the goons. Well, mus uh, Musketeer or Cassador, but yeah, better Cassador at this moment because as he has only Dragoons, Cassador has have a 50% resistance rate to Dragoons. And they are way cheaper than Dragoons too, so. And they also have a bonus shoot against them, so it's just a win 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 situation for Cassador over here. And this is going uh, very good for Lucas on the plat uh, on the plateau at the moment. You can see Ajeev has dropped below the 1900 uh, points. Lucas is well still above the 2100. Uh, Ajeev is now attempting to get rid of these buildings, but I'm not sure that it will actually change a lot because Lucas has the uh, well has the plateau now, especially if he walls it off, he can, well, fight over here, and roll right over here, and then shoot every wall here, so then Lucas will have the advantage at that moment. This is not a good situation for Lucas, well, to be honest, because well, Lucas is fixing way too much on defending uh, against a jeep. On the uh, over here, especially that he is not getting rid of this, which is, which ah, which is a shame. Because well, if you want to fight over here, then just get rid of all this and wall it off, and then go to the plateau. Don't just defend and go back, and well, just wait to get attacked right over there again. You might want to wall it off straight. So best idea, yeah, good. Lucas is getting uh, some towers up. The chief does not want to rush to run at all on the right side. Quite awkward, I have to say, because Lucas has almost nothing over here. And he has some idle catheters. So if uh, Lucas trains some mortars now, he can put them here and get rid of all these buildings. So easy. Okay, so he is re-walling, so I think that this will soon be over for a G if he wants to run again, because then he will completely lose the, the entire plateau. 
but maybe not. Not so. We have a mortar. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is the mortar? I want. Oh, it's there. I would have liked to see a mortar over here, or over here. Oh, no, 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 no. Over here, or over here. To get rid of these two, and one over here to get rid of these. And maybe a cool thing to get rid of this mortar because it's quite a pain in the ass this one because it's blocked off by all the cliffs the only way you can kill it is with dragoons no history because it's just a bit too far for covering but well let's see it seems that the jeep gave up on the left side of the uh, trading route and Lucas is building on the right side just in case very good idea. You never know what uh, Jiz is going to try. Now I would rather, yeah, if he makes the wall right over here, I would say it's GG. Because he will have no front page at all. He will have a Jeep in his pocket. But he will be, well, right over here, just fighting uh, in the front, uh, well, in the heads up, but in a very bad situation as his uh, eco wall will be open run in but I think that Lucas is well uh, way too uh, well how to say that kind yeah he's way too kind to uh, wall off over here and then uh, rush in while uh, having destroyed those walls but well being kind also has his advantages <laughs> to be honest I would definitely not have done that I'm just a jerk I know it so uh, to be honest I have to say that a, uh, a Jeep has a very bad army composition at the moment because he is throwing musketeer dragoons on against a uh, skirmisher hussar well Dragoons are not the unit you want to make against uh, mostly in a Portuguese uh, mirror when the opponent is going uh, melee heavy. You just want to go musketeer and artillery at that moment in order to block everything off. So let's see, there go. comes the organ guns. Some idle units over here. Some idle unit here. If he rolls it off over here, it's also you can also get rid of all these buildings. Okay, so let's see. It seems that the Jeep is actually um, focusing on. Uh, oh shit, it's only so much. It's focusing on uh, artillery um, cover in war at the moment. Because, well, it's a heads up fight right here. So, good choice for the Jeep. Bad choice for Lucas for not having wall this off and getting rid of these walls wired by mortars because that would be GG. But I guess that Lucas wants a fight and not a win. So yeah, now it's a good idea from uh, a chief to go these units composition which is Cassador Musketeer and a bit of uh, Dragoon because well it's a very sh uh, narrow opening so every Hussar attempt from Lucas will get blocked off by the Musketeers and it's Cassador and the Dragoons and the Musketeers will get rid of them 
Oh, good army composition at the moment. It seems that uh, Lucas is using the natives, but a chief is not. Yeah, let's see, he does have no, he does not have the native update part either. So let's see, uh, Lucas is uh, high enough on wood. Ah, this is why Lucas is uh, a chief is not using any natives, but he has no wood. And well, the chief has now dropped below the uh, 1700 uh, points. So this, will be, I think, that will soon be. Uh, this will soon be over, but we never know. Ah, it seems that the chief has uh, tried again, but failed, unfortunately. Could have changed a lot if Lucas did not see it. But. To be honest, in this, uh, in these colors. Uh, which is green against uh, teal. I must say that well, both of these colors are not very uh, easy to distinguish on the map. So, if you see something teal here or green, well, I have to say I cannot make any difference. But maybe I'm colorblind. So in that case, you might just want to change to uh, friend and foe colors, which makes it very more easy here. Well, which makes it easier to spot any enemy attempt to uh, build because it's uh, highlighted in, well, not highlighted, but it's, uh, it, uh, everything will be in red, so it's uh, easier to spot in, that, in those cases. Ah, definitely Lucas is in for two kinds. He is not sure, oh, maybe he's going to shoot this. No, he's not going to shoot the wall. He wants to fight. He wants to win with the fight. He does not want to win without the fight. <coughs> so. There are a lot of coverings, I have to say, and not enough um, anti musket uh, anti cavalry, which are musketeer in these days. Ajit is having trouble on resources, although. Nah. No. Not that bad. much difference, though. So. Just 10k. And trying to pay a difference. Yeah. What did you send to the um, Blood Brothers yet? Yeah, they both have. Which could, well, be a bit weird if you do Ah, it seems that Lucas has made a choice to attack the vault. Good choice, but a bit too late, I have to say. Because, well, he's winning over here very badly, so. He doesn't actually need this anymore. But well, of course, once this is the, uh, down, if he runs in over here, then uh, look, uh, Ajit will find himself well overwhelmed from every every side. He will not be able to defend, defend it here, defend it here. So, yeah, and there is the GG. <laughs> okay, I won. <laughs> nah. Anyway, so uh, let's see some statistics. Uh, post game. Uh, yeah. So definitely, the uh, Lucas has a higher KD, way higher combat uh, experience ratio. Uh, twenty k more resources. Twenty five k more resources. He spent less on units. Yeah, that's because Lucas went. Yeah, as he had a better fighting, Ajir just kept spamming in order to keep up, just like I did against Dictator. You know, all resources, whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, I don't think the rest is really interesting, I have to say. Nah. Okay, so. I guess that the chief found himself overwhelmed already as he, his first wall was being down. So, 
this was the first match, I believe, uh, between Ajit and Lucas L99. So you will probably see the second part on Andy's uh, the uh, next time. I don't know when they actually play uh, that match, but well, it will be soon, quite soon, I think. So stay tuned for for scenes from our next episode.